Let's talk about cheat reps and muscle growth. Various factors related to exercise technique have been quite the topic of interest lately, especially in the evidence-based fitness space. A narrative review recently published in 2024 seemed to conclude that we don't know a whole lot about exercise technique. In this narrative review, the authors suggest that when trying to maximize hypertrophy, one should employ a range of motion that emphasizes training at long muscle lengths, while also employing a repetition tempo of somewhere between two and eight seconds. Now, the long muscle length recommendation seems to be much more nuanced than how it's being presented in this review. But regardless, this paper received a lot of attention and the scientific community appeared to underplay the importance of exercise technique or at least admit that the direct evidence for a lot of technique-based recommendations were lacking. As a follow-up to this review, a new study titled Do Cheaters Prosper? set out to answer this very question. It was led by researchers from Lehman College with contributions from well-known fitness educator Jeff Nippard and is possibly the most direct investigation that we've had on this topic so far. So here's how they did it. They recruited 30 untrained young adults, male and female, and had each person train both arms, but in two different ways. One arm did exercises with strict controlled form, the other arm did the same exercises only they used external momentum, which is probably what most of us call cheat reps. The design, which is called a within subject study, is great because it reduces the variability as each person acts as their own control. The exercises were basic bicep curls and tricep pushdowns, and both arms trained twice a week for eight weeks, and the participants did four sets of eight to 12 reps per exercise, going to momentary failure each time. Most importantly, the strict reps were done with controlled tempo and posture, while the cheat reps involved swinging, using leg drive, leaning forwards, and basically anything that made the weight go up, regardless of how clean it looked. To measure muscle growth, the researchers used ultrasound to examine the changes in muscle thickness in the upper arms. Muscle thickness was measured at 55 and 65% the distance of the upper arm. So what were the results? Well, both arms got bigger. And to be perfectly honest, there is no surprise there. Eight weeks of consistent resistance training, even for beginners, will usually lead to muscle gain. But here's the key finding. There was no significant difference in muscle growth between the cheat reps and the strict reps. That's right, using momentum didn't help, but it also didn't hurt. Overall, the authors noted moderate amounts of muscle growth. And just to help paint a slightly clearer picture, I'll pop up the data on the screen for you. So to quickly summarize what you can see here, the participants' percentage change in biceps and tricep muscle thickness was between 5.6% and 14.7% on average. Now, here's something interesting. The total training volume, meaning the amount of weight lifted over the time course, was significantly higher in the cheat condition. In fact, the cheat arm often lifted nearly double the volume load compared to the strict arm. And yet, despite all this extra work, there was no greater muscle growth. Why, you might ask? Well, one likely reason is that the added momentum shifted some of the effort away from the target muscle groups, which were the biceps and triceps, onto some of the supporting muscles like the shoulders, the back, and even the legs. So while the total load increased, the stimulus on the target muscle may have stayed about the same. So what does this mean for your training? Well, first of all, cheat reps aren't necessarily a bad thing. This study shows that they can be used without compromising muscle growth, or at least in untrained individuals doing single joint exercises like bicep curls and pushdowns over eight weeks. But that doesn't mean that cheat reps are superior either, or that strict form doesn't matter. In fact, strict form may still be safer, especially over longer periods of training or when doing more complex multi-joint lifts. The researchers did note some complaints in the early parts of the study, like elevated heart rate from the cheat reps, but no serious injuries were reported. Still, the authors caution that over time, using momentum might increase stress on the joints, tendons, and ligaments, especially if form gets too sloppy. Therefore, cheat reps should be implemented with caution. Also, this study only looked at isolated arm movements in beginners, so we don't yet know how cheat reps affect some of the bigger multi-joint lifts like rows or deadlifts, or how they impact experienced lifters. So now I wanna shift the discussion over to science-based communication. 
Sometimes science communicators can run away with one study's findings. For example, you may have heard that technique doesn't matter or that cheat reps are just as good as strict reps based on this one paper. And maybe this is true to an extent, but we must try to understand why they are the same in this particular paper. So I've thought about why both groups in this study observed muscle growth. And it may be more appropriate to classify the cheat rep condition in this study as an eccentric overload condition. The reason for the increased training volume in the cheat rep condition is because the participants were still working within their 8 to 12 rep max range. And since using momentum during the concentric phase allows for heavier weights to be lifted, it's likely that the cheat rep group was able to use an absolute greater load compared to the strict rep group. Now the methods detail that the cheat rep group still had to control the eccentric part of the movement, and this was about two seconds. You could alternatively view this study as traditional isotonic training versus eccentric overload training. And through this lens, it's not surprising that the groups grew similarly. And it's also important to communicate that cheat reps work if you control the negative. And finally, it is interesting to point out that the cheat rep group used momentum to get the weight up. So it seems like they actually spent less total time at long muscle lengths. So this provides more indirect evidence that long muscle lengths may not be the be all end all for muscle growth. So here are my main takeaways. Cheat reps when used carefully aren't the muscle killers some make them out to be. This study also shows that using a bit of momentum in your curls or push downs won't ruin your gains. In fact, if you care about your total volume, you might actually lift more total weight doing this approach. More volume doesn't always mean more growth, especially if that extra effort isn't coming from the muscle groups you're actually trying to train. In my opinion, a strict form is still your best bet for targeting muscles directly and efficiently, and they're likely going to help reduce your risk of injury. And as for cheat reps, well, they can be a useful tool also, especially when you're pushing close to failure and want to squeeze out an extra rep or two and possibly burn a few more calories in the process. Just don't let them become your default. Think of it like this, cheat reps are the hot sauce of your workout. Great for a little extra kick, but probably not something you want to pour over every meal. So train with purpose folks, challenge your muscles, and most importantly, know why you're doing what you're doing. That is how real progress happens. So that's all I have for you today, folks. Thank you so much for watching. And if you've got questions about today's video, please feel free to drop me a comment. And for more information about my one-on-one -on -one coaching, my workout app, Be A Fit, my educational books, research, and other free resources, check out the links in the description below.